Hello everyone, this is XM Physics. In this video, I'll be discussing the electric field and potential produced by a charged spherical conductor. Take for example, a positively charged um, metal ball. So where are the excess charges going to be? They are going to be evenly distributed, not throughout the volume, but um, on the spherical surface. So a charged sphere is actually a charged shell, if it's a matter. And ta-da! I've already drawn here the field pattern of a charged sphere or shell. Eh? Why didn't I draw anything inside the sphere? Because there's no electric field inside the shell. Nothing. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Now these amazing results can, can be proven using this thing called the shell theorem. So if you're interested, you can Google on it. Okay, now what about outside the shell? If you extend a few lines back into the shell, doesn't it look like there's a point charge sitting at the center of the sphere? That's right. The electric field produced by a spherical shell of charge Q is actually exactly the same as the field produced by a point charge Q at the center of the shell. So a spherical shell Q and a point charge Q looks the same as long as you are outside the shell. Alright, let's now sketch a graph to show how the electric field strength varies with uh, distance R. And R is measured from the center of the sphere. As mentioned earlier, from, from the outside, um, a charged shell looks exactly like a point charge sitting at the center. So the E field will vary according to the formula of a point charge, E is equals to KQ over R square. The maximum field strength actually occurs here um, as the surface of the sphere. So big R is the radius of the sphere. So the maximum field strength has the value KQ over radius of the sphere square. What about the inside of the sphere? Now remember, inside the sphere, the field strength is zero. So we are going to draw a line, a horizontal line at zero here. So if you imagine pushing a positive test charge towards the charged sphere, then as you approach the sphere, um, you are going to experience a stronger and stronger electric repulsion because the field strength is getting stronger and stronger. But the moment you penetrate the sphere, the moment you enter the sphere, the electric repulsion falls to zero because there's no field strength inside the sphere. Okay, now let's move on to the potential graph. Again, outside the sphere, uh, the charged sphere looks like a point charge at the center here. So the Potential is going to vary according to the formula for a point charge. V is equal to KQ over R. The maximum potential is going to happen here at the surface of the sphere. And it has the value KQ over radius of the sphere. Now remember the potential throughout a conductor is a constant. So the potential in the sphere is constant. But it's not zero. Because if it's zero, then there's a very uh, steep drop in the potential at the surface of the sphere. And that represents a very steep potential gradient, which would imply an infinite electric field strength, which we know is not true. The potential has to be constant throughout, including with the surface of the sphere. So the constant potential in the sphere ought to be the same value as the potential at the surface of the sphere, KQ over R. So if you imagine pushing a positive test charge towards the sphere, then as you move it closer and closer, the test charge is gaining EPE. That's why you have to keep doing work, keep doing work in order for it to gain the EPE so that it can approach the matter sphere. But once uh, you are inside, then you don't have to do any more work because the potential inside the sphere is constant. Alright, that's all. Ta-ta!